My name is Brian Sills. I'm an Android developer at Big Nerd Ranch, and today I'm talking about KT Lint. Uh, so first off, necessary, what is KT Lint? Um, straight from their GitHub page, it is an anti-bike shedding Kotlin linter with built-in formatter. Um, it was initially a side project of some random person, but it was wonderfully uh, taken under the wing by Pinterest. Um, and for, for my talk, we're going to talk how it hooks in with Gradle. Thankfully, it seems like a lot of us are Android developers, so we probably use Gradle. Um, and even if you're back end, maybe. Um, but first off, um, what is bike shedding? Um, it's a great term. Uh, it was coined back in the 70s. Uh, people were talking about there would be a big committee of really smart individual scientists trying to be trying to build a uh, nuclear reactor. Um, and instead of focusing on the important things like safely getting rid of waste, um, having proper security procedures, they'd focus on what color is the bike shed going to be painted. Um, it's not, people should, there are important things to worry about, especially when it comes to coding, and there are not important things. I would argue that formatting your code, not very important. Um, it's good that it's consistent and it's readable, but like we shouldn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. So, on the other hand, what is a linter and a formatter? Uh, a linter and format, uh, linter is the tool that says, oh, hey, you have a problem here, and the formatter is the ones that can fix it for you. So, this lovely spacing right here, um, before a KT lint, you get that ugliness, and afterwards, it's all pretty. Likewise, with empty space, Um, with really long functions and horrible uh, tabbing. Like, it, this is the very simple stuff that um, is hopefully never as bad as the before here, but um, it's something that can be fixed automatically and really easily. Um, it's so easy that we can do it in the 10 minutes that I have. Um, and finally, tabs for spaces is a dumb argument. Stop having it. All right. All right, so I'm going to walk you through uh, setting it up in your project. This is uh, Android Studio. Um, we are in the root build.gradle file. Um, so like most other uh, Gradle plugins, you need to have the correct uh, URL for the plugin repository. Uh, KTLint is hosted on Gradle's plugin repository, so if you don't have it, add it in right here. Um, and then in your build script dependencies, um, add in the KT Link Gradle uh, build script plugin. Now, if you only if you have uh, only one Gradle module in your project, uh, you could go to your for Android folks your apps build .gradle, Gradle file and apply the plugin like you do for a lot of other stuff like the uh, uh, Android plugin. Oh, like the Android application plugin, but as you can see, I have quite a few modules. And like applying it, applying the KT Lint plugin to each one of these by hand is kind of annoying. Um, so, what I recommend here instead is in the root build.gradle file, a lot of times people have a sub projects or an all projects block. Um, this is a a uh, chunk of code that gets run on all the subprojects or um, all the all the projects within this uh, Gradle project, and 
So things like making sure that they all have the same repositories, making sure that uh, CAP prints out the right number of errors, um, targeting Java 8, fun stuff that you want to do just one place, um, is a great place to enable your KTLint plugin. And just like every other plugin, it's real simple. Uh, just apply plugin with the correct name. Um, and that's all you have to do in order to get it just working. Um, I'm going to give a little uh, bonus tip for Android folks. Um, there are some specific Android formatting rules that KTLint has. Um, so if you, uh, if you want, you can enable custom or the, those Android rules by um, in an after evaluate block, checking to see if the project is either an Android application or an Android library. And if so, uh, enable KTLint like the Android KTLint rules like so. So now we actually have something that works. Um, and to prove it off, or to show it off. Okay. And I, ooh, yes. Um, I'm just going to run the KTLint check on one of my modules. You see it does all the great old fun stuff. And it failed. I am a terrible coder. I can't format my code correctly. But as you can see, it has a lot of pretty. It's impossible. It has a lot of pretty actionable um, errors that print out, like, oh, file must end in a new line, um, ex exceeded max length. Um, and I could real easily, uh, let me do, um, I could really easily run a, another script called ktlint or another Gradle task called ktlint format. And this does the same checks, but once it finds all the problem areas, it will format the files for you. So now you can see I have a bunch of files that have been automatically formatted and now are pretty and clean and easy to read. Uh, unfortunately, um, I don't like it when people mass change hundreds and hundreds of files. I think it kind of ruins Git history. Um, so I don't recommend you run KTLint format over your entire repo. Uh, your, your code will be pretty, but you would have lost a lot of Git history. So don't do this. Okay. Um, instead, uh, one of the things you can enable is uh, within KTLint is ignoring failures. Um, this means that when you run check, you'll get all these print, this printouts, but your, uh, your build will still be success successful. Um, and also if you have any CI, you might run something like Gradle W, um, you might run something like Gradle W check, which uh, runs other linters, it runs static analysis, all that fun stuff. And uh, when, you, uh, when you enable the, the failures, then this will still pass, but it will still print out all the file or all the places where you could fix formatting. <laughs> Um, with this Gradle plugin, there are a couple 
cool little extra features. Um, with this one Gradle task called uh, KT Lint apply to idea, you can see or, it changes some files in your idea uh, folder. So all the uh, int uh, IntelliJ installations, Android Studio, they will now follow KT Lint for formatting instead of their own custom thing. Uh, just a heads up, this is kind of wonky. So I, I was going to show it off, but like it, it's a good idea and for future proofing, you should do it. But right now it's kind of flaky. Um, something that's not flaky is adding a pre-commit hook. So, uh, what I just did was I ran a simple task and it created a git hook. Uh, does everyone, does, is there anyone who doesn't know what a git hook is? Um, basically, it's something that will happen just before you commit something in, uh, with, it, with Git. And so you can run all sorts of crazy scripts. Um, and here, what it does is it looks over every single file that you changed, and it sees, hey, if any of these are Kotlin files, let's run ktlint over this. Um, so if I go to my project and I go to just some random file and I just like terrorize formatting and oh no. And you don't realize how many places you can put spaces in until you realize until you try this. Um, like clearly these changes are not good. Um, but I maybe I make a tiny little private uh, function that does nothing, and I want to commit that. So there are real changes. Uh, you can see, uh, I do have a Colin file that I changed. So now, whenever I try to, do, to get add, and then I get commit, you can see it's running ktlint over these files. And now even before I finish writing in my commit message, I'm back here and most of it works. Um, you saw that it fixed the uh, indent here. Um, come on. Oh well, you get the, get the gist. Um, and hopefully you're not writing code like this. Um, so you can, uh, so it is a useful little tool, um, and it's worth your time. Uh, so that's really all I have for the demo. Um, we spent 15 minutes, and I added to my project. It's really simple. Um, it's one of those things that you shouldn't think about. Uh, just add it in, forget about it, and your code base will be better. And that's it for me. Thank you.